So one of the first things that we can learn how to do is adding our functions. So we could have f plus g of x. All right, sometimes you guys see the notation like this. But in reality, it's really the same thing as f of x plus g of x. That's really just what we're simply asking. So when you have the addition of two functions, all we're simply going to do is take the rules of each function and then combine them. So we have 1 over 3x plus 1 plus 1 or negative. Now hopefully you guys can, hopefully you guys can identify that plusing a minus is really the same thing as subtracting. Right? Do you guys agree with me? OK. So let's just rewrite this as subtraction. Plus a negative is same, still the same thing as subtraction. So even though this is an addition, we're actually kind of rewriting a subtraction problem. Now, the next thing is we have to add fractions. Now, you guys have been dealing with fractions for a very, very long time. So I will help you out because I know that some people still have a little bit of bad history with fractions. You guys had like a bad breakup, you know, and you just like, you haven't gone over, you haven't gone through the healing process of fractions. So let's just kind of go back and remember the good times. The good times in fractions were adding very simple fractions when they had common denominators, right? And this is the easy stuff. Everybody follows me, yes? OK, and then, then, we, then our relationship with fractions kind of started to change a little bit once we got into non-common denominators, right? And what we had to do is we had to find the LCD, the smallest number that both 4 and 3 divided into. And to do that, way back in the day, what we did is we created multiples. We'd say, all right, the multiples of 4, 8, 12, 16. All right, let's do 3, 6, 9, 12. Oh. There's the least common denominator, which is 12, right? And then we'd say, OK, the LCD is equal to 12. Now, what did we do with that? Well, what we wanted to do is since both 4 and 3 divided into 12, we wanted to multiply them by multipliers to get to 12. So therefore, they would have common denominators. So you'd multiply by 3 over 3, and then multiply by 4 over 4. And usually, students just didn't really like this because it just took so much more effort and time to do problems like this. But once we have them with common denominators, and remember, whatever you multiply in the denominator, you have to multiply in the numerator. Once we have the common denominators, though, we are good. Right? So our relationship then really starts to get tricky with fractions is once we start bringing in variables. Now, the first variable that we can understand, would like if we just had x, the, the multiples of x are, are actually rather easy. You could have x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. Right? x divides into all of those. Yes, would you guys agree? x divides into all of them. But where x really gets tricky is, what are the multiples of 3x plus 1? And you don't have to think about an answer. You guys can see that it already starts kind of getting a little confusing based on your knowledge of multiples, right? Numbers are relatively easy. One variable is relatively easy. But it kind of gets a little bit confusing and tricky once you start dealing with those. So let's go back to an easy way to find the least common multiple. Here, I listed the multiples, which was kind of like our third grade way of doing it. But in reality, a really quick way to find the least common denominator would just be to multiply them, right? Take 4 and 3 and multiply them, right? Now, that doesn't always give you the least common multiple. Like, these could be 6 and 2. 6 and 2, the least common multiple is not 12, it's 6. But that always gives you a common denominator. Would you guys agree? So in this case, when you're dealing with variables and you know expressions, variable expressions, the best thing to do to find the least common denominator is to do exactly that. Just multiply LCD is equal to 3x plus 1 times x. It's just the product of those. We know it works for numbers. It's going to work for algebraic expressions as well. Okay? Even though this is more arbitrary, it doesn't make as much sense as that does. We know that multiplying these gives you an LCD. Multiplying these is going to give you the LCD as well. Okay. So now what we need to do, though, is we need to say, all right, if my LCD is 3x plus 1 times x, what do I need to multiply 3x plus 1 by to get it to be that? Just x. So you multiply by x over x. And then here, you need to multiply by 3x plus 1. Okay. When we do that, we now have x over x times 3x plus 1 minus 3x plus 1 all over x times 3x plus 1. Do you guys now see 
that we have two fractions with common denominators. Yes? And when we have two fractions with common denominators, where do we apply the operation? In the numerator or the denominator? The numerator. So um, all you're going to do now is just combine these. Now, again, real quick, notice that you're subtracting not 3x. You're subtracting 3x plus 1. So when you combine these, it's going to be x minus 3x minus 1 all over x times, bless you, 3x plus 1. Now we can go ahead and simplify this. And we can do x minus 3x. So if you have a dollar, you owe me $3. You now owe me negative 2x minus 1 all over x times 3x plus 1. Anybody have any questions on that? And that's just the simplifying part. We didn't even get to the domain. Whew. Again, I am kind of doing the harder ones for you guys. You guys will have the easier ones. Okay, so now let's go and get into the domain. Well guys, the domain is just like what we did on the homework. So all we need to do is simply identify the domain is take a look at what is our denominator. We don't want our denominator can equal zero. Well here we can apply the zero product property, x cannot equal zero, and three x plus one cannot equal zero. So therefore this is going to be negative one, so x cannot equal negative one third. So my domain, in this case, is going to be negative infinity to negative one-third, union negative one-third to zero, union zero to infinity. Sorry, I got a little tight on space. What does everybody see? Because it can't be negative one-third, and it can't be zero. So negative infinity to negative one third, negative one third to zero, zero to infinity. Yes. What do you mean separately? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly. Like your homework, you could just do it from there, right? Yeah. But again, the the question is not so much what's the domain. The question is combining the functions. So it is a two-part question. Yes. But yeah, if I was just asking you the domain, you don't need to do all this work. Just do the domain from them separately, right? But we are pra we are practicing the algebra which is going to be the operation of combining them, okay? All right, let me do one more for you. So this was adding. You guys notice that subtraction is just going to be the same thing, but it would be, you know, minus a negative, so it would really be like addition. But I think you guys would be okay with, instead of subtracting the numerators, adding the numerators, but the process is the same. Would you guys agree? Yes? Is that okay if I don't do addition and we just say a subtraction was enough? It's the same thing. It's just adding the numerator instead of subtracting. Multiplication. Multiplication is rather simple as well. All we're simply doing is multiplying straight across. So if you were to multiply these, 1 times 1 is 1. And your denominator would be 3x plus 1 times x. Remember, there's a negative, though, too. But you're basically your denominator is going to be exactly the same, right? So the domain doesn't really change. However, division does change things, and I want to go over that. So if it's OK with you, I will erase. Multiply straight across. Okay. Actually, let me do division. I'll start a video for you.